I was drawn to the story of Margaret, Queen of Scots, firstly because she's quite an extraordinary woman. She's Henry VIII's sister and she's married to the King of Scotland. But also because her actual life story is so full of event and so full of triumph and disaster. And also because she has such a poor reputation, even as late as our times, because people say that she was unreliable as an ally and she was deceitful and that she would do anything to stay in power. Well, I think she was unreliable as an ally and deceitful and she would do anything to stay in power, just like all of the men rulers of the time who changed their minds about who they were allied with, who were disloyal to their colleagues and to their comrades. And Margaret did no worse than this except for the fact that in addition to it, she married three times. What I hope readers will take away from her story is an idea of the diversity of the Tudor women experience. We tend to think so much of the six wives of Henry VIII and we think only of them. We tend to think of them in context of the men in their lives, of the husbands, of the fathers who controlled them. But in the case of Margaret, and indeed of her sisters, Mary, and her sister-in-law, Catherine of Aragon, we see women who genuinely take agency of their own lives. In the case of Margaret, she's a ruling queen of a country. She becomes regent. She's a queen militant. She marches at the head of her army. She is determined to get her son on the throne to follow her husband, who was king of Scotland. And I think the readers can see from that something of the power that a woman can take even in a society where the odds are really stacked against her.